Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey. And on this Monday's edition of The Next Right Thing, we're talking about living out the virtues during the holidays. And what better way to do it than to start practicing before we meet each other for Thanksgiving Day. Without further ado, good morning, Debbie and Adam. Good morning, Keith. Thank you so much. Yes, happy Monday to you. Adam and I are so happy to be here for the next right thing for this week, especially because we're coming up on Thanksgiving and there's so much we can learn and grow in during this entire week as we encounter tons of people we we haven't uh, done on a regular basis before when they say it's like the biggest travel day of the year coming up and all sorts of things so we're going to be meeting up with a lot of people and it can really uh you know be difficult it could be stressful and it's a real it's really a wonderful time when you say adam to practice um the cardinal virtues the human virtues along with the theological virtues and to really be the best christian we can possibly be yeah you know, the holidays, Deb, one of the things that that you learn, you know, in like becoming a therapist or, or in the life coaching work, it becomes really clear that the holidays are, for most people, the most challenging time of the year. It's a very positive time. It's supposed to be, you know, a joyful time. It's a celebration. We, we get, you know, time off from work. But in reality, for a lot of people, it's very stressful. And... It's a time that a lot of people fall back into the troubled, you know, parts of maybe their family dynamics that have never really healed or been resolved. And so, you know, a lot of people are anxious about the holidays and then they're kind of amped up as they enter the holidays. And so they're impatient with people. They're, you know, wanting it to be over, but simultaneously not wanting to be lonely. And, you know, that's the other side is, is a lot of people are lonely on the holidays. So it's just such an important time and a real opportunity to try to live well and live a Christian life because, you know, as, as we've said before, and it's just true, it's really easy to, you know, have faith in God and be patient and, um, you know, kind of express these virtues when things are going well, right? Right. Right. When there's a roof over our head, when we have a good job, when, you know, things are going well, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy with God. I love God. And, you know, I'm, I'm patient with other people and I try to be charitable. It's when the, the rubber hits the road and, and there's trouble in life. That's when we grow in the virtues, right. because that's when you have to really work at it to live them out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, Keith mentioned, you know, theological virtues, cardinal or human virtues, just so people remember, the theological virtues are faith, hope and charity, sometimes translated as love. And those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. Those are graces that we receive at baptism and, and they develop through our lives, but they're gifts from God. We can't build, uh, we can't create our faith through our own work. Our hope in heaven which is something unseen. We can't create it through our own work. And true charitable love, you know, loving our neighbor as ourselves, is something that as humans without the grace of God, it would be very difficult or impossible to truly do that. Now we can pray for more of those virtues and we can cooperate with the grace in our lives, the sacramental graces and all the others. And, and that brings grace in and those virtues are bolstered, but they're from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ones we're mainly talking about today are the cardinal virtues, which is right. prud prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. These are the ones that we really contribute to. Right, that we can we can make uh, with our own efforts and to be able to work out and increase with our with our um, interactions with our neighbor. Right, um, just to make sure that our, our listeners know where we're where we're pulling this from. It's the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It begins around paragraph eighteen oh four, and you can read all about the cardinal virtues or human virtues. Go right into the theological virtues and the seven virtues, and you can really understand how how in the cardinal virtues all. Really really how we conduct our, our lives and, and interact with others is all rooted in those cardinal virtues. So yes, Adam, why don't you continue? I think it's really important that we, we look at the details of each of these um, four virtues and realize how they're going to, they are really going to show up 
during the Thanksgiving holidays as we as we start, um, you know, uh, bumping up. Uh, and into people at, at the at the dinner table in the airports or shopping um, the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, and and for those that are um, wondering, oh, you're, you're referring to the catechism. What is that? Or maybe I don't have a catechism at home. It's easy to go to the USCCB website. That's the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. So usccb.org. And there you can you can quickly do a search and you'll see the whole catechism is online for you for free. Okay, so here's here's where we get to the challenges, right, Deb? Mm-hmm. So prudence means basically being wise about the best course of action. Prudence is kind of um, it's kind of a wisdom. It's a patient wisdom. It's a pa- oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So instead of just reacting like um, knee jerk reaction, which as we mentioned at the opening, it, it tends to be the old patterns that maybe are dysfunctional in our relationships, in our families, um, in ourselves with strangers. Instead of a knee-jerk reaction, when maybe somebody says something that triggers you or, or causes you to you know get emotional, prudence is a patient wisdom of taking a breath, you know, take a beat, as they say in Hollywood, take a breath, you know, it could be something simple as, you know, count to five and keep your mouth shut and let your let the uh, let the steam come down a little bit. Right. And then decide what is the best and charitable way to respond right now, because the other person's probably stuck in one of the old dysfunctional patterns and they're they're starting to to live out that script again, which mm-hmm. we tend to live out the scripts that we learned in our childhood. So we want to be patient with them and realize, you know, in the end, none of us want to fall back into the dysfunction. Right. And so prudence, and this applies in many areas of life, not just with family, of course, and business decisions and your work. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's that patient wisdom, and it can pay great dividends. Well, and just let's even apply it to, like I said at the beginning of this segment, you know, we're coming up on the bu- busiest travel day of the year. And even even the um, the news reports are saying that people could potentially be very frustrated. There could be delays. There could be problems getting through, um, you know, um, going through the uh, security checkpoints. There's There could be all sorts of things. And that's going to make people frustrated because they want to get to their destination. They want to get to their Thanksgiving celebration. And people could really turn out to be horrible with each other if we if we um, react rather than respond. And so this is a, a great opportunity for those that are traveling to <laughs> to practice the virtue of prudence. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And you know, a, a simple thing, I don't know if it'll be helpful to anybody else, but it's been helpful to me when it, when I catch myself getting frustrated, either like walking in an airport, which sometimes I do, or driving. Um, you know, somebody does something that maybe isn't the brightest thing in driving, or they, they missed putting on their turn signal and, you know, almost, you almost cut you, you almost, off. Yeah, or you almost hit into them. <laughs> yeah. It, what's been helpful for me instead of, you know, kind of losing my temper in my own head there is to remember that I've almost certainly done the same thing to somebody else, probably without even realizing it. Like I've been that person, like, because we're all human beings. We've all had bad days. We've all been distracted while we're driving. You know, hopefully we're not looking at our phones, but most of us do. I've been that person. And so instead of kind of flipping out Maybe internally, I don't, you know, I don't yell at people or yell in the car, but instead of losing my temper, I try to remember, like, I've done that to somebody else Mm -hmm. and just try to be patient right? Um, because, you know, here's my fellow human being and and we've all been there, basically. Right. And, you know, that's so interesting you say that. I love how you brought that because as you were saying, I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? I could really think about that at times when when something happens to me. I was probably that person for somebody else. Right. That that really frustrated them. The other thing that I think of is when somebody really um, gets you know, me, uh, gets me really frustrated or impatient or something of that nature. I, I automatically think to myself that, you know, it's my opportunity to give them a gift today and probably they're hurting in some way because typically people respond badly or react badly or just are, you know, genuinely just kind of in a 
I don't know, in a kind of a, a sad or bad mood because there, there's some, there's something that's really bothering them inside. And I, and I think to myself, you know, give them a gift today to let them realize that, you know, not everybody is, is mean and not everybody is going to, going to hurt them and not everybody is, is wanting to attack them and give them that gift. Uh, and, and I, I will tell you that the times that I really practice that boy, has it been miraculous on, you know, interactions I've had with strangers when it really could have gone, gone in the wrong way. What do you say to that? Yeah. You know, there, there's something that I came to understand in, in studying psychology. I have a master's in adult clinical psychology and all but dissertation for the doctorate. And then I went on and worked in, in the state prisons for a, a number of years, working with really angry, troubled people for the most part. One thing I came to understand over the years is anger always is covering over fear. Mm-hmm. When, whenever you're angry or somebody else is angry, if you, if, you, if you have the ability to and you can look at it carefully, Anger is a self-protective thing because That's we right. feel afraid. That's right. And so you anger feel is, threatened. Yeah. yeah, you feel threatened in some way, whether mm-hmm. it's internally, emotionally, from the past, you've been wounded so much that people are terrifying to you, and so you try to you know, get them under control by being mean to them right away. Um, there, there's different things that kind of can trigger this, but to have some compassion that you know, the angry and patient person is actually afraid at some deeper level. They may not even fully understand it yet. But when you get into that, like in doing therapy and, and the wisdom that sometimes comes with years in life, you realize that. And that can help us be more patient with others. Absolutely. And I've encountered that in airports. You were, we were using airports as an example because that's a lot of people are going to be traveling or if you're, if you're driving to your destination for Thanksgiving. So you're spot on about that, Adam. And there's so much more we can say about this. But we're talking about the cardinal virtues today. And for now, let's hold it there. We'll send it back to Keith for some announcements. All righty. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam. And this whole story, uh, this this uh, theme, um, especially being at the airport, reminded me of a friend who recently, this over this last weekend, dropped his rental keys because he rented a car um, in the drop box. So there really wasn't anybody to you know give the keys to. So he put it in the drop box and realized his cell phone was in the car still. So he missed his flight, and it was just a mess. But he had a really good head on himself. And the people there at the airport were so nice to him. They were you know, checking in on him, making sure he was. Like, okay, uh, just goes to show like, yeah, you could do something really simple and nice for somebody that might be having a bad day. And that just that makes that other person's day. So just keep that in mind as we travel this this week uh, to keep a smile on your face and to like Debbie did maybe give someone a gift, whether it's you know a, a gift, an actual gift or maybe just a pleasant conversation. And then uh, real quick, too, if you don't have a copy of the catechism of the Catholic Church, uh, as Adam mentioned. Um, Producer Tim has included it, a link to the catechism in the show notes. And if you're looking for a physical copy, you can always count on EWTN to find a quality version. So there you go. But coming up next, we are continuing the conversation on cardinal virtues here on The Next Right Thing on Morning Joy, for truth matters. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and on the next right thing, the second half, you're continuing the conversation of living out these virtues, these cardinal virtues, especially uh, during the holiday. Without further ado, Debbie and Adam, take it away. Thanks so much, Keith. Yeah, we're talking about the cardinal virtues, human virtues. So I believe, Adam, you left off at Prudence. Prudence is on uh, paragraph 1806. Um, isn't that where you, you left off at Prudence, right? Did you go into mm-hmm, the next mm-hmm. one yet? Okay, I just want to make sure we're not jumping ahead because there's so much to say about this and not a lot of time. So we're trying to pack it all in on this Monday edition so that everybody could get ready for this week. So we have three to go, mm-hmm. justice, fortitude, and temperance. That's right. So okay. what's justice? Well, we kind of all know what the word justice means. But in, in, the, in the human sense, you could say it's fairness to everybody's wants, needs and rights in your life so you know the holidays are a time when of course you know people want you to come visit they want you to spend time there might be the the two sides of the family both wanting you know a visit there might be needs like there could be somebody in the family that's in the hospital or in a care home of some type 
and they, you know, they really want to visit, but they could, re sometimes they really need a visit, you know, if they're, if there's people that are struggling. And then there's also, we can think of rights. Like when we think of our, our direct parents, you know, we have a commandment to honor our father and mother. And so. To elevate that, their dignity as a father and mother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to yeah. honor them. And, on, and that takes honor many them. forms. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's a commandment. You know, it's not advice. It's a commandment. And if we fail that in a serious way, it's a mortal sin. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be a reason God has set up that relationship with such a, such a very serious um, kind of commandment linked to it. And, you know, it's one, of, it's one of the commandments that carries a reward, too. It's not just, you know, it's a mortal sin if you, if you break this knowingly and in a serious way, but length of days, a long life is promised in Scripture when we honor our father and our mother. So it's very, very important. So I would say that's kind of a right that our parents have. Now, of course, you know, the footnote is if there's serious dysfunction and, you know, or abuse. really, mm -hmm. yeah, abuse and things like that, obviously protect yourself and, and do what's reasonable for yourself. We're, we're kind of referring to, you know, at least minimally healthy family dynamics and relationships. But so justice is fairness to everyone, you know, as, as best you can. You're not going right. to make everybody happy, but try to be fair. Right. And Go just ahead, again, to just, re just to remind everyone that it's also not, not just, you know, uh, giving the uh, lower level of fairness to somebody. Okay. I guess I have to be like that because they're, they're a son or daughter of God. Okay. I understand that. But it's also what I said earlier about elevating their dignity. That is very, very important to remember that that person, that, that soul is very important to God. And so we have to recognize that whether we like them or not. And, you know, maybe they're the, maybe they're the most difficult people to be around, but to God, they're very, very important. And, and that's, that's a key to this virtue there when we're interacting with mm -hmm. people. Yeah. It's helpful. Mm -hmm. It's, it's helpful to remember of, yeah, of course, the way God sees them. And right. it's also helpful to remember that we're a work in progress too. Exactly. And maybe, and they maybe may not like the us. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Maybe yeah. we're the person that in the past has not done the best all the time. And maybe right. people are uncomfortable with us. Right. Okay. So justice in your relationships, important. Let's look, let's go to temperance and finish with fortitude. So okay. temperance is, is essentially kind of self-control, right? Again, the holidays are, are a time of peak emotional kind of being amped up for a lot of people. Not everybody. Some some families, it's very harmonious. But mm -hmm. for a lot of people, there's there's a there's a real potential to get amped up and get snippy. And sometimes that leads to self-medicating with drinking. Right. You know, you want to calm down. Moderation is key. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so temperance is about self-control, both in your emotions. You know, again, take a beat, take a breath you know, before you just react to something, but also watch the drinking, you know, and uh, a lot of people that are prescribed psych meds, maybe for anxiety and things like that, might have a temptation to take an extra, you know, medication outside of their prescription. I've seen that happen a lot and seen that lead to problems. Let's just have self-control and trust ourselves and our prayer to have that kind of peace during this time and have that self-control. Don't turn to losing self-control and just throwing your hands up and saying, well, I can't do this. I'm just going to, you know, maybe snap at somebody or I'm going to drink a little extra to, you know, make this bearable. Let's be sober and have temperance. You can have a, you know, obviously if, if you do a reasonable thing, you could have wine with dinner, that type of thing, if that's part of your life. But let's have self-control and temperance. So the final one, Deb. And, and this by, is, a, and by the way, know, temperance is, is paragraph 1809, just in case anybody's interested. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And temperance is more than just about drinking, obviously. Right. It's, it's, about, right. it's about any indulgence that can be e harmful. Exactly. Okay. We'll finish with the last so one. So we'll finish with fortitude. Mm -hmm. So fortitude is essentially endurance with courage. So it's not just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bite my tongue and get through this and just sit in the corner and, and wait till it's over. That's kind of like endurance, but not with courage. You want to be
be patient with people and have endurance, even if they're not maybe living out these virtues as best as possible, to kind of have, you know, have some understanding for them and have courage in the face of that, have courage in the face of that in the sense of I'm going to be patient, I'm going to right. bear up under this, I'm going to do my best and, and I'm going to kind of take the higher road here and try to endure this and be charitable and patient in spite of it. Right. So always remember when you're dealing with people because they're human, they're, you're going to you're going to face these obstacles with people. And so it's your chance to to be um, uh, strong in, in, and have that courage, but to make sure that it is always you do what is right and good. There's a there's a real big difference in that, because some people will say, well, this is what I know to be true. And they'll they'll be they'll be so difficult when they take their stance. You always want to make sure you you, you are um, positioning yourself and displaying what is right and good. It's a it's a it's a big key to that mm -hmm. virtue. Yep. So again, you know, today we've been talking about cardinal virtues, which is ones that we really contribute a lot to with our with our will and our choices, our mm -hmm. choices in how we handle situations, how we enter into them, how we move out of those situations. There's a lot of us in those. Prayer enters into this too, though. Grace does enter into these virtues. As you're moving into the holidays, if things have been challenging in the past, this is a time to pray ahead of those encounters of those moments in the midst of it if if maybe you know you're feeling a tension rising even in yourself just a little prayer in your mind you know lord please help me to be patient with mom with dad you know with my cousin whatever it might be please help me in this moment to be loving and see them the way you see them mm -hmm. and that's the gift i'm us... talking about yes go ahead yeah and and help us to maybe this is an opportunity mm -hmm. In the best case, this is an opportunity for us to be a little more genuine, a little more patient and loving yes. with each other. It's an opportunity for these relationships to improve. So if you're interested, go to the Catechism. It starts around a paragraph 1800 and read all about the cardinal or, hu or human virtues and the theological virtues and really understand it better as you are interacting with people this week, because this is going to be the, the week that you're going to have this great opportunity to really show Christ to others. Okay, Adam, that'll do it for today. I'm looking forward to hearing what uh, Monsignor Charles Pope has to say. So we'll make some room for him and we'll end. And have a great day, Adam, and we'll send it back to Keith. Thanks again, Debbie and Adam. And if you think a friend or family member could benefit from this edition of The Next Right Thing, just know you can always send a link over to them via podcast. So wherever you listen to podcasting, so whether it's Spotify, Apple, Apple Podcasts, I believe it's called, or even just simply by going to grnonline.com slash joy, You'll be, able, you'll be able to find this exact segment of The Next Right Thing and send that on over. And were you able to watch the most recent episode of The Spirit World with Debbie and Adam? They talked about how important it is for us to get ready to encounter God and really what it means to prepare our spirits and ways that you can do it in your own life. So they give you some practical ways on doing that. Uh, if you did miss it, that's okay. You can always search the spirit worlds either facebook or youtube and be able to find it and watch otherwise stay tuned for this coming weekend saturday because that's when the next episode of the spirit world is 10 a.m central 11 a.m eastern coming up next we're talking more kind of on the same subject the role of giving thanks coming this week right but we're going to talk about it the catholic way so stay tuned right here on morning joy where truth matters you're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters.